Well, I think adversity creates the greatest stage for audacity. And you can go throughout the scriptures, and what you discover is the stories that we continue to retell, the story that we find inspiration from, are typically stories that start out with a struggle. They start out with pain. They start out with adversity. I mean, I can think about Matthew 14 right now. We could talk about Peter, everybody's favorite disciple, because uh, everybody relates to Peter. He was the cussing disciple. But this man, out of the 12, actually walked on water. I've seen a lot of miracles in my day, Matt. I've been around TBN for many, many years, from my childhood years. But I have yet to see somebody actually walk on water. And of all people to do it, it was Peter. Well, how did Peter do it? Peter was in the midst of a storm. But in the storm, he called out to Christ. He called out to Jesus. And Jesus, what did he say? Jesus said, come to me. It's really an illustration of the gospel. It wasn't really about walking on water. There's a much deeper story at play there, which is God. He comes to us that nothing separates us. Storm, water, pandemic. If God has to walk on top of coronavirus to get to people, he's going to do it. That's the Uh gospel, that when I was in my greatest need, my greatest challenge, God came to me. Uh Yet I still love the idea that in these moments of adversity, is opportunities for audacity. Peter takes a step of faith, and when he does, he walks on water. We would never have Peter's story if there wasn't first a storm. And what I'm constantly telling our community here in Miami, what I'm constantly talking to our staff about, what I'm encouraging my wife with, what I'm encouraging our boys with, is that stories, stories that are worth telling, they have to have a struggle. And this is just one struggle. We're going to get this thing. In fact, we should just start right there. We're going to get through this. This too shall pass. Amen. Question is, Amen. as things change, how are you going to change? What is your testimony mm. going to be on the other side of this crisis? Because what I know about a crisis is you get through one, there's always another one that's awaiting us. Yeah. The wise man built his house on the rock. The foolish man built his house on the sand. When the storm came, the wise man's house stood mm. strong. Isn't that something? Wisdom doesn't prevent the storm. Faith doesn't prevent the storm. Watching TBN doesn't prevent the storm. Going to Voo Church doesn't prevent the storm. We all face the storm. The question is, what are we building our life upon? And when you ask me, what is it that I want to say to a generation? What is it I want to say to the world right now? I want to say, continue to fix your eyes on Jesus, author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith. For when Peter walked on the water, how did he do it? He did it as Ty was just saying, he heard the word. And as he listened to the voice of Jesus, his faith was strong and that which was liquid became solid. The moment he started looking around at the wind and the waves, funny, how do you even see wind? Wind is invisible. But you and I, we are good at fixing our eyes on invisible things, temporary things, things of this world that all it does is birth fear in our life. And Jesus, he comes over, even when I'm thinking, why did you doubt you of little faith? And he helps us back up. I want to encourage people right now, continue to listen to the voice of God and watch as the thing that is liquid becomes solid. Peter, my word is solid. Listen to my word, as Ty was already saying. And we're going to come through this thing. We're going to come through this thing better. We're going to come through this thing stronger. I don't know when this thing is going to, is going to end. But I know this, that on the other side of this, I'm going to be better for it. And that's the mindset and that's the confession that I walk into every bit of this crisis with.